chapter 13, verse 24 is where I want to draw a seed to plant in our hearts today. Uh, it comes from our reading in Zechariah 7, 8, and 9 and Luke chapter 13. That 24th verse says in the 13th chapter of Luke, Strive to enter through the narrow gate, for many, I say to you, will seek to enter, but will not be able. I like what one author says about this. He says, strive to enter through the narrow gate. Uh, well, why? Because the way is narrow. It takes effort and purpose to enter into it. A narrow gate also implies that we can't bring with us unnecessary things. Therefore, we must strive in order to lay these things aside and come in. The Greek word for strive has the idea of a struggle or prize fight, end quote. The reality is that many come to the gate, but then they decide they don't like it for one reason or another. Uh, might be too wide, too narrow, too fancy, not not fancy enough, not too plain. Uh, whatever the reason may be, it's a terrible thing to refuse to enter through the gate. Strive to an agony, or as they did uh, when they uh, participated in the Olympic Games to receive the little wreath, the garland of leaves that they would place upon the winner's head. Strive to enter through the narrow gate isn't just uh, a call to save yourself by good works. Good works aren't the right gate. They aren't enough. One may strive to enter all their life long, but if it isn't the right, great, right gate, it, it just doesn't make any difference. Jesus himself is the gate. He is the door. It's necessary to strive to enter in because there are many obstacles that are in the way. The world itself is an obstacle. The devil is an obstacle. And probably the worst obstacle of all, our own flesh, our own desires. For we want to, boy, we hang on to our rights tenaciously. We don't want to give up our right. We don't want to surrender our will to the Lord. And so the striving that takes place as we agonize, uh, weighing it all and trying to decide whether to or not to. And well, I can remember from my own life, the time that I finally gave up, there was an intense battle going on inside of my own heart. But thank God, Jesus won and he won the victory for me and I surrendered my heart and life to the Lord. It's interesting, sometimes parallel passage talks about the way being the narrow way and a narrow gate or a straight gate. Um, there isn't a broader, narrow way. There isn't a narrower, broad way. It's only this one way, and people have to choose which way they're going to walk, which gate they're going to go through. And Jesus, as I said, he's the only door. He's the only one that will enter. It's a message that needs to be preached in the world today. And too often, um, preachers today dance all around the issue without really getting right to the point of the whole thing of the gospel surrender your life to Jesus. I pray today that each one of us who hears this has done that, has made that surrender and given up. If you haven't, boy, recognize that you have a need. Repent of your sin and ask God to forgive you and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. It's the greatest thing that you'll ever do. Amen. Well, I pray the Lord will richly bless all of us today as we walk together with the Lord. Uh, once we've been entered in through the gate, we enter into a rest, no longer striving to enter in because we have entered in and we have the rest, the peace of God that passes all understanding. Amen. May the Lord richly bless you today, I pray.